Hello, hello, thanks for stopping by the channel. This is Erica for the PlayStation 4, released by Flavorworks in 2021, and then it was printed to hard copy by Limited Red Games after that. I had this in my pile for a bit, and I popped it in not knowing exactly what it was. It's one of those games I bought from Limited Run Games a few years back, and I was kind of mostly for fear of missing out. There was a time when I was getting stuff very frequently from them. I've since stopped, particularly when they started printing any game they could get their hands on just because they thought they could make a market to sell to collectors. Not that they were good games that needed a hard copy. As a result, I ended up with a whole bunch of games that I probably should have just bought on Steam for a much better price. Here, we have an interactive movie. It's basically a modern FMV game. When it comes to these games, the big question for me is really whether or not the story is interesting enough to keep me entertained. I got through this one in a few hours. I don't think I was particularly moved in any direction. It was fine. It just wasn't particularly exciting for me. It's definitely like you're playing a movie, and it looks great. That has to be said, it looks just like a movie. If you walked into the room when I was playing, and you didn't know I was playing a game, you'd think you were watching a Blu-ray. So it looks fantastic, and I've got nothing to complain about the way this one looks. It is top-notch. But in terms of gameplay, I find it a little odd. They made some odd choices related to this one in terms of handling. As soon as you boot the game up, it says you should use an app from your phone to play the game and this immediately sets me off. It's a really bad idea. I understand developers might want to innovate, and they want to separate their game from their competitors, and they want to be clever. But this is a really bad idea coming out of the gates. I know this game didn't start on PlayStation 4. I'm pretty sure it started on PC, but no matter what console you actually are playing this on, to redirect me to use my phone as a controller? It seems to be counterintuitive, or productive. They're saying, don't use the hardware you spent money on, use this new, different method. It just seems like a bad idea. How do you know it's going to be compatible with everyone's phone? And how long is it going to be before you stop supporting that application? And does it really seem like a massive enough innovation to include in a game? Did it seem like it was going to push millions of video game units to people? I doubt it. I just don't think something like this is useful because it's not going to help the game be successful. I also don't want to fumble with an application on my phone. You want me, you're forcing me, or you're trying to force me to install something. I keep personal stuff on my phone. You want me to expose my security to some third-rate app just to play on a video game? Every additional app on my phone is a potential risk. But still, I broke down and I decided to give it a try. So I pulled my phone out. The first thing it tells me on my phone, on the Google Store, it's not supported in my phone version. Well... I guess that means all the development effort that went into this in the application, all that programming effort, it was ultimately for nothing. A total waste. They should have put that effort back into the core game. Instead, I end up using the PS4 controller. Mostly it's just the touchpad in the center, which is still kind of an oddity. I know this touchpad was something new when the controller came out, but it always felt to me like it was generally unused or unneeded. It's a novelty for most games. At least the games I play. So you're going to swirl around the touchpad when you see certain things on screen just to try to make things happen. I think it's a little slow, and I don't think it's intuitive enough, and I did get by, but I didn't care for it. Somehow it just feels like it would have been better using a regular PlayStation analog controller, even if I'm just using one controller and the Xbox button. It just seemed like a better idea. And I also think people are generally conditioned to utilize the controllers. All these controllers are the same across the board for the most part. You get a Switch controller, an Xbox controller, or PlayStation controller. There's now a comfort that comes to using these controllers, and as soon as you change that up, you're pushing me a step away from the action I might experience on screen. Not that there's a ton to be had here, at least not in my playthrough. I didn't feel any massive suspense, danger, and honestly, there weren't that many questions to be had with this game. Not that I really cared to get answered anyway. But once again, it's a beautiful looking game, and honestly... I would have thought this is something that you probably could have easily just converted to playing a DVD player. I mean, it's just a choose-your-own-adventure that looks awesome. You could use a regular DVD controller for that. Of course, the design is to get through a story. Hopefully it's a story that you like. And I didn't think it was anything too remarkable. It felt like a mid-to-late 90s direct-to-DVD thriller horror movie. Which had no real scares for me. But we do get a woman in peril, so I guess there's that. 
if I'm to analyze the plot, and I don't know if there are multiple explanations here. I got through this, and the explanation that they gave me I understand, but I guess the ending could change depending on the different paths you take. I guess that could really change the explanation as to what's happening. I just didn't play it a second and third time. Your character is Erica. Your mother died when you were young, and your father was murdered. And you saw him get killed when you were a little girl, but you don't recognize the killer. This is a flashback scene at the very start. And also when your father was killed, there was a symbol carved into his chest. And you've been trying to work out that symbol, or the reason for your father's death for quite some time, it seems. It also seems to be set in the UK because of all the accents. But basically from the get-go, I have a basic understanding of what's going on, and there's nothing that's really a surprise to me here. Within the first five minutes, this is obviously connected to some sort of a cult, or possibly a scientist group that's experimenting on you, or, at the least, they're manipulating you. Your parents were potentially complicit in this over the years, you don't know. This story is supposed to be what brings it all to a head. The thing is, why the story happens at this point in time, I'm not sure. I don't know what triggers this. Why, today of all days, did this start to happen? Who knows? But, after I got through it, it's possible, like, once again, I only have a certain view on what happened, but based on my story choices, you know, this is the explanation I have. Maybe it's a different angle if I play it again. But as far as the narrative goes overall, I guess it's passable, but there are some stupid things that don't ring true for me, and they just make me groan when they happen. A package is sent to your house at the beginning, and there's a severed hand in it. This is the start, and as a result, there's an inspector assigned to your case, and he has you go stay at this hospital-slash-science facility where your father used to work. What? What? What's the rationale for that? This is where he thinks you should logically stay? I don't understand why this would ever happen. You have an apartment, you're not a child. You're an adult. Why not just stay in your apartment? The police can't force you to leave, you did nothing wrong, and there's no reason to think you're in danger in your apartment. This is also where I realized they've created a very weak and fragile female character that needs to be taken care of by other people. She's going to be led around during this game, and she's going to be gaslit in various places. She is clearly someone people are going to be manipulating, and it's not the type of female lead that I generally appreciate. The inspector is also a complete fool. Complete fool. He brings you to a crime scene at one point, and he asks you to stay outside in the hall. What? He brought you to the line of danger? This is such a 80s terrible trope that we don't do anymore. Why would you ever do this? It's so bizarre. And at one point, I actually led him to the point where the main villain is. I actually see this person murder another person and tells me where to meet them. So we've got multiple bodies at this point. The killer has interacted with me and told me to meet them at a certain spot. And then I tell the inspector this. His bright idea? Let me go into the barn myself. What? You're sitting in a car with him. You even ask him. You, you can ask him, and I did. You're not bringing any backup. His answer to that is, I'm going to wait until I know something is there. Well, he gets himself killed, of course, so great. Real smart, buddy. It seems to me running into any scene without backup, or calling for backup, or bringing a civilian into the line of danger, this is amazing to me. These are all fireable, career-ending offenses to an inspector. I'm confident of that. At the absolute least, he could have said that he called for backup and then just decided to rush in for some other reason. I guess that would have made at least a little bit of sense. It's so foolish. Besides from a few strange moments like this, it was okay overall. I call it more of a thriller than a horror game, and I wasn't scared at any point. It also felt like it was bits and pieces of a lot of other movies I'd seen over the years. Just little story elements or setups that are all rolled into one. So nothing felt new. It was also shorter than I would have expected. Just over two hours, I think. Even though we have full motion video here, it, it feels like it should be in the category of the games from the company Supermassive Games like The Quarry or Little Hope, games I've reviewed on the channel. Those are really, really long events where you're running through a movie with a whole bunch of characters. It's a much longer experience, and you get way more game interactions where you have to do things, and your timing really matters there. doesn't really feel like it matters too much here. Well, that's all I have today for Erica for the PlayStation 4. If you decide to give it a try, I'd suggest looking for it on Steam. I'm guessing it's cheaper there. Thanks for stopping by for a look. Hope to catch you on another video.